the U.S. Uh, displaced Russia as the EU's number one LNG supplier partway through 2023, but their sales, I think they were sending uh, upwards of $1 billion a month to Russia every month in terms of LNG. That's right. because uh, their ban on natural gas from Russia doesn't take effect until the end of 2027. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of using, taking advantage of that loophole. Um, yeah, but so the U.S. has tried to step up and, and play a new role in that space, um, and critics of the pause say that this is really damaging to U.S. relationships with European allies, mm -hmm. as well as uh, as well as well allies in Asia, mm -hmm. such as Japan, which is a major, major LNG importer as well. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook. We talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined today by energy and environment reporter Brian Depish, also known as our LN genius. <laughs> So okay. tell us a little bit about, you know, the Biden administration has done a pause on mm -hmm. LNG, liquefied natural gas mm -hmm. exports. Talk about what the current state of play is there. Absolutely. So uh, basically what happened was the Biden administration, of course, uh, ordered a pause on all new approvals of LNG export facilities. Mm -hmm. um, this basically... Uh, you know, uh, keeps in, I guess, sort of limbo, a ton of projects that were slated to come online, um, which were gonna double U.S. export capacity by before the end of the decade. Um, to be sure, uh, industry growth here has really ballooned uh, since 2019 alone, and especially following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, and critics, it's really sparked some deep political division, mm -hmm. um, even among Democrats who are sort of split among the environmental groups who say that LNG methane emissions would be deeply environmentally harmful. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the more moderates in the party, you know, Manchin and John Fetterman and Bob Casey of Pennsylvania, who also said they would oppose the, the pause by the administration. Because there seem to be some concerns about how it might benefit Russia. Yes, so that is a big concern, especially because while the EU doesn't get much piped gas from Russia anymore following the explosion of Nord Stream 1 uh, at the beginning of the war, it actually gets a ton of Russian LNG. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the U.S. Uh, displaced Russia as the EU's number one LNG supplier partway through 2023, but their sales, I think they were sending uh, upwards of $1 billion a month to Russia every month in terms of LNG. That's right. because uh, their ban on natural gas from Russia doesn't take effect until the end of 2027. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of using, taking advantage of that loophole. Um, yeah, but so the U.S. has tried to step up and, and play a new role in that space. Um, and critics of the pause say that this is really damaging to U.S. relationships with European allies, mm -hmm. as, well as, uh, as well as allies in Asia, mm -hmm. such as Japan, which is a major, major LNG importer as well. So how did some of these allies react, or has it been muted up to this point? It's interesting. Um, folks that I've spoken to, uh, analysts in this space, have noted in particular that the European Commission is well aware that we have a presidential election coming up in sure. 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they have remained uh, pretty quiet on the topic, mm -hmm. more so than we might expect them to be in a non-election year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, this is a hugely political issue. Uh, so it's really, I think it's going to be one of the major major driving energy issues of of this election cycle. Mm -hmm. um, so they've been careful not to say anything publicly. Uh, Japan, actually, uh, a senior official in their, in their um, energy cabinet said that uh, it would be da potentially damaging for them, and it could actually threaten future investments in this space. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, U.S. allies in Europe and Asia invest millions of dollars into these new import terminals, mm -hmm. and they're really unlikely to continue to do so or to maybe even trust the U.S. to follow through on its commitments, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's given the this fits and starts. Sure, some instability, and when you're trying to invest in various things, you like stability. Exactly, exactly. And it's uh, one of the latest examples of the Biden administration sort of whipsawing on its overtures to producers and, you know, then pulling it, pulling back. <laughs> Maybe whipsawing energy will be the next energy source. It could be. <laughs> Thank you, Brianne. Thank you. You can read Brianne and subscribe to our daily on energy newsletter at WashingtonExaminer.com.